ready, we're getting started. He's gonna have to scrape it off again. Okay, we need to, flag. And we need to scrape the piece of Damascus off now and put some flux on it. Okay. Tell him why you have to put the flux on it. The, the flux is, is just, like, just like a welding flux. It helps everything come up to temperature without burning the whole thing up in the heat. Okay. Wait. So Rob, and, Rob, uh, and the flux is just plain old twenty mule team borax. Yep, same borax they used to advertise on the uh, what is it the movie shows that they used to have in the nineteen. Yep. The 1950s. Yeah, yep. borax cleaning oh, so detergent. It's, so it's not it the, is. It's just a laundry soap. detergent. Oh, so not the movie Borat. You're not talking about that. And it, there we go. Where are you? <laughs> and it just falls down and soaks into the layers of the metal and keeps everything clean so it can, everything Whoa. can be brought up to the temperature without screwing it all up and, and getting it all dirty. And it will fuse it together easier when you get yeah. Now, Tell him, Mark, if you don't use the flux, what happens? Sometimes it sticks together, sometimes yes, it don't. <laughs> but, you know, everybody uses flux. Now, is there something else you can use besides this type of flux? Uh, you could use silica sand. I heard that. I heard that's better. Now, is this true? I don't know if this is... Well, I think the borax. I think no. the borax takes away a little bit of the oxidization too that occurs. Now they say in something like if you're in more humid area, the other one does better or something like that. Versus, is that true or is that bullshit? No, that's, that's probably I, I crap. Could, I could yeah, tell you hear so much shit. Because you if you go over to England, they don't use anything. Yeah, and you hear so much crap about Damascus, other steels, and all that. That's why you come with us. You know, you're going to hear the straight crap. So. I don't know whether it's the straight crap, but what I do <laughs> <That's> straight, <laughs> no, not with his talk. skirt, not what with I do kind of tapers off I sometimes. Edit, edit. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like I said, I think you heard a lot of people are having a hard time getting the coal and everything. And it's. Uh, I know a couple of guys, they're just freaking out and everything. Yes, you sir. might have to end up going to gas. Oh, yes. Coke, Coke is a very rare commodity it's nowadays really in our hard. economic times. Yeah, yeah. Like everything, guys. Blame yeah, the government. We have, yeah, yeah. We have no, we blame the insurance companies. No, no. That's who we blame. <laughs> the insurance companies, and then it trickles down to the government. <laughs> Well, but hey, my, my art still costs the same price. Blame the banks, and then it'll trickle up to the government. Yeah, but I think, you know, I'll tell you, insurance companies, man, they're just the, the, the main thing. That, I mean, look in the 1940s. You, had, you didn't have to have insurance on your damn car and all the other stuff. And really? Kids could ride in the back of your truck and different stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, insurance companies come and say, you have to have this. You don't have to have... And you have to put your that. children in the seat yeah. belt. And then all this other crap, and look what it does. And then we That's end up paying them all our money, <laughs> and then they, they decide they want to raise it up, they'll raise it on you. Because they said there's too many accidents now. Too many people are claiming, you know, uh, filing. It's all bull crap. So the insurance companies, bleh, yeah. You know what's going to happen to you in the long run. Well, Fitzson, did, didn't you take the uh, tailgate off the back of your truck so that the chopper's new dog would have to learn to balance? <laughs> <laughs> chopper's dog rides inside, just like my bull terrier does. I do not put my dogs in the back of the truck. Yeah. I had a boxer jump out of the back of my truck. But anyway, we're going to come up back on the truck. We're, we're just we're about ready, ready here. Is, yeah. You see, the, see you see the fire getting bright yellow on the top coming out with the sparks coming out. We are just about ready to bake this great big lump of steel out to weld it together. First, Drop I'm gonna, her, shake it off and get out of here. First I'm going to bring it out and squeeze it in the vise that John's leaning on. To squish it together, then I'm going to hurry and take it to the hammer here. Which is a 50 pound hammer, guys. So, okay, here we go.
Am I at the right angle here, Rob? There we go. Process. There's two types that I've heard of samurai style. Are one is layering. This is the layering process of the samurai sword. Where you take two different types of steels, one really really hard and one semi hard, and you put them together in different layers and then draw them out, cut them up, fold them over, or fold in their process. We cut them up because it makes it a little bit quicker and then we hammer them out again. There's the other process of taking a very, very hard, like an L6, and you fold it with a soft steel inside to give it the flexibility, but the strength on the outside for sharpness. Those two styles are done, or have been done, as Sumerians, or Sumerians, <laughs> Samurais. So that's, that's two styles. This is the other style of layering that they did, where they did folding and folding and folding and folding. And that gives you that serrated edge across the bottom. But it's micro thin, you can't see it, but that's exactly what's happened. But what the big, this is the same type of deal. But, but what the big thing was with the samurai sword, is the samurai sword could take a strike down to the side of it, and, everything, and it would bend, it wouldn't break. A lot of high carbon steel knight swords from back in the Middle Ages with the, the knights and everything, they could break, they'd hit, take a uh, nice hit to the side and they'll just bust. Damascus will usually bend and you can bend it right back. That's why you'll see even uh, guys in cutting competitions, samurai swords, they'll, sometimes they'll bend their sword a little bit and you'll see them working it, get, bend it back because you've got to be right on the cut and everything. So that's why Damascus. Because, God, man, you get take a strike to the side of the sword and you breast it in half, you don't have a sword anymore. <laughs> yeah, you, you're pretty much out of <laughs> So that's love. what's good. It's great about the, the yeah, mask. The mask is really yeah, good. Really okay, he's going to scrape more, again. And I got to scrape this off and add more flux. Because I've had several Damascus makers tell me. You weld everything twice so you know everything is going to stick the way you want it. Weld your piece of steel twice or maybe even three times if you want to make sure that it's all stuck together without any impurities in it. Yeah, and like I said you guys, you'll see in some Damascus, you'll see that there's little voids in the Damascus and everything. It doesn't hurt, the, hurt it. Unless no, it's really it hurt it at yeah, all. Yeah, unless there's some weird ass, weird something weird happened to it. But you know, I've had it where a guy brought in a uh, a Damascus blade and it was on the tip and it was this far on the buoy and he goes, John, look at this this little crack right here. And I go, dude, you don't have to worry about it. And he goes, No, really, it's gonna bust. I know it. So I took it over to the vise and we started bending it and everything. That's all it did is bend. It didn't do anything to it. And he was so surprised. But then we had the tip going a little bit and it took me even more work. But then he was guys, pissed because his knife was bent. <laughs> <laughs> I fixed it. But it's just been guys. There you go, John. <laughs> you'll get guys like that, that. It's just, it's funny as all hell. You're just. Now the whole world knows. <laughs> <laughs> so believe me. So. Now blades are easy to get back to the right shape yeah. if they're the right tool steel. Yeah. And then also, uh, you know, the, G the Japanese have a certain name for it when there's little voids in the steel. Shit. And everything. 